We're here to talk to you about visual storytelling, and this has been a topic that has been several sessions throughout the day, and I don't know if any of you took in the earlier sessions, but they were wonderful. And really, it is uh, enlightening to see all the different kind of perspectives on visual storytelling. And what we're going to try and do today is bring forth ours, but do it in a way that hopefully is meaningful to you regardless of the industry that you're in. Several weeks ago, we got a phone call from Content Marketing Institute that said, we want to do this whole day on visual storytelling, but we need a couple of people to put some, some sessions together, and specifically one that really highlights excellent or stellar performance within this area. So we said, sure, why not? We can do that. It sounds like a relatively simple session to put together. Um, and we do visual storytelling for a number of our clients, so we'll get at it. Well, as we dove into that, what we ended up discovering is that there are a number of wonderful examples out in the marketplace. And a simple Google search will net you several. So I encourage you all to do that post this session. But what also became very clear was there are certain industries that naturally lent themselves to visual storytelling. Entertainment, sports, engineering, and science. But there was also a lot of other industries, probably those that you, many of you represent, that didn't naturally or were I lack better words, underrepresented within this space, such as financial services, insurance, B2B, healthcare, retail, packaged goods, et cetera. But all those industries can benefit from visual storytelling. So what we tried to put together today is first, five examples that we believe are a little bit above the marketplace, and we'll tell you why, but secondly is to touch on different categories. So as you leave today, you have some best practices or bits of advice that regardless of your industry, you should be able to go back and apply it to your specific category. So that's our goal. Let's go ahead and dive in. First, what is visual storytelling? Let's just be clear what that is. Or let's start with what it's not. It's not a Facebook carousel. <laughs> All right? It is also not a 1,200-word article with key visuals. Nor is it just a video, a well-done storytelling video that you put in isolation. It is not those things. It is much, much more. But before I go into what it actually is, let's also be conscious that visual storytelling is suddenly a buzzword, right? Everyone's talking about it. I want to do visual storytelling. It is suddenly having a, a renaissance, if you will. But the reality is visual storytelling has been with us for a very long time. And in, in reality, we've been doing it for centuries, right? From the caveman drawings warning of a potential tribal invasion to silent movies that transported audiences for the first time to new experiences, new lands, new fantasies. We've been using visual storytelling as a means to educate, engage, and motivate audiences for centuries. So this is nothing new. But how we're using it is new. And that is the reality that we are leveraging graphics, images, pictures, and videos in a combined fashion, in a journalistic manner. And the key there is a journalistic manner to drive emotional engagement, make the audience member feel invested in understanding more about the topic. You want to create that sense that motivates them in the gut that I want to, I want to understand this topic even more. The second is to drive interaction, make them part of the process. This is about creating an experience. Have them be part of that experience. And lastly, and most importantly, motivate them to take action after the experience. Here's the first tip of the day. In today's world, and we're going to explain why in a moment, but in today's world, it is critical for you to start at the end of the experience and work your way back versus starting at the beginning. What is it that you want the audience member to do post the experience so that you build towards that? Nobody wants them to just experience this, this wonderfully well-crafted piece and then stop and go away somewhere else. So what is it that you want them to do? Do you want them to learn more about the topic? Do you want them to request a demo? Do you want them to purchase a product, whatever it is, start there and work your way back to the beginning. And this is more important than ever before because we live in a more noisy world than ever before. None of these stats, I'm guessing none of these stats are surprising to anyone in this room. 
you probably have seen these stats before. And let's all be really honest with ourselves. We collectively are responsible for the last one. Two million articles are posted to the marketplace every single day. So if we were having a different session around editorial strategy, we'd be asking ourselves, what are we doing about our article that's going to make it stand out amongst two million posted every day? But for this particular session, it is a question of how do we stand out of this fray? What do we do differently? And what is amazing is when you look across the B2B and the B2C space, the vast majority of what we produce just lives in a sea of words. So this is an opportunity, this is an inflection point in our collective industry where we need to start talking a little bit about doing less for more. Possibly fewer articles and more experiences to bring forward our point and make a change. And visual storytelling is a key way to do that because the other side of this coin is breaking through and resonating is harder than ever before. Microsoft says that the average human now has an attention span of eight seconds. My wife would agree with that. <laughs> it also means that I lost most of you in this room when I said hello. So hopefully I've gotten you back at this point, but this is the key. When we're gonna show you these different examples today, it is really about how do you grab someone's attention in those eight seconds and make them personally, emotionally invested in the story that you're about to tell them and ultimately at the end, take the action that you intended. I'm gonna turn it over now to Sasha to give you the tips and the guidance and show you the different examples that we brought forth to illustrate those best practices. Thank you, Eric. Um, so I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, um, but uh, change is really the only constant um, in life. And um, how we consume content online is no exception to the rule. Um, there is tons of stuff out there. There is just a clutter that we need to pierce through. And you cannot just like post another article. It would be uh, futile. Um, so this is why today what we're going to explore are ways to orchestrate interaction design, um, experience design, creative technology, and journalism to put something in the world that's different, that's evolved. Um, because we know, we are, all of us here, we're, we're an audience. And we know that more and more we judge the brands that we adopt because um, of the value that they bring uh, to our lives every day. Um, this is how we judge them. This is how we uh, remember them. And also because, you know, you, you have that eight second of attention span, and so how do we make sure that we can grab that attention and keep it? And it seems that uh, visual storytelling uh, is able to grab our attention, is able to tell us stories that we like to follow. Uh, some numbers are supposed, you know, are supporting that. Three times more site visit, 18% increased conversion rate, 2.5 times the average dwell time, and four times more site engagement. So these are obviously numbers that show that when you build value, when you push value out there, uh, it is successful. So um, in a pragmatic way, what makes quality visual storytelling? Uh, what are the keys to successful visual storytelling? Create tension so that you can get like some emotion out of, out of your story to entertain. Uh, it needs to educate. Um, those, those who facilitate micro interactions uh, allow the user to get engaged with uh, with the audio, with with the product, with the story. It's that level of interaction, those little like haptics that you can see in some of these experiences. They make a lot of difference. And clear call to uh, clear calls to action. That means just just like guide uh, the audience in the right direction. Don't be confusing. Um, the elements. So what what are the different like elements that um, constitute uh, visual storytelling? Um, Thought-provoking journalism, I say very often to my team, just don't push another article out there, it's just like more clutter. 
you need to really pick your headlines, and you need to talk about something that you know, hasn't been covered yet. So pick what is valuable, what hasn't been covered before. Otherwise, it's going to get lost. Innovative UX, that means that it's going to shape your product. It's going to shape your story. It's going to just like architect it. Um, artful visual design, I personally believe in design. I think it creates a bond in between a brand and an audience. It creates a sense of belonging, uh, a brand that cares. It shows in the visual design. Um, haptics and animation, again, it's the level of how, this, how these stories are going to behave in your hand or it's going to behave with your mouse. It's engaging. It's that level of interaction. And creative technology, which is uh, if we put something new out there, normally there hasn't been a code written for it. So you need someone to just like help you create that code. And it's new. And there is going to be trial and error. Um, creative technology is there for that. So who? Who are the people? Uh, a journalist, a UX designer, an art director, and a creative technologist. This is your mix. This is your pod that's going to create those immersive, uh, rich media um, uh, visual stories. So now we're going to go into like some examples. Um, and some of them you, you would have probably seen. Some of them are actually not too recent. As, as Eric said, it's been around for a while. Um, so, but we think that these ones stick out. They're just like above what is out there in the market space right now. The first one is, uh, was part of a series that the New York Times pushed out uh, right before the 2016 Olympics. That was a series on US athletes that were going to attend those Olympics. Um, they're very linear, all of them. We're just going to show you one today. It's, um, it's documentary style. It's built like a documentary. It has a pretty dramatic beginning, introduction. It goes into an analytical development. And it ends with a, a pretty radical statement. Um, so the topic is Simona Biles. So Simona Biles is probably the greatest gymnast ever so far. Um, and like many gifted athletes, they make things look very easy. We don't see as an audience what goes into um, the moves, the skills that goes into just like, and the effort that goes into every move. It just disappears because it, it looks easy. Um, so this article just is going to try to highlight and make us understand through just a handful of, of, of facts the reasons why, the reasons to believe why what we're witnessing on the floor with Simone Biles is just truly amazing. So the intro is very cinematic. A slow-mo creates a tension. There's music or sound. Um, it's a nice intro. And then what comes next is a, um, a statement from Mary Lou Retton that says, well, uh, she's the best, and no one can beat her. Then we go into uh, something that is a little bit more, uh, that's going to relate you to the topic, to her. It goes, it tells you a little bit of history, and tells you what the predictions are for the next Olympics. And then we come to the first point that's going to highlight how amazing she is. Um, in very journalistic fashion, we're going to dissect, or the New York Times is going to dissect, one move, which is called the Biles. Um, but I'm going to give you the technical. Uh, a double layout with a half twist and a blind landing. Um, so it starts with something that we both, with, we all know. The TV footage, this is how we see it. It's amazing, but we don't realize it. I've seen some of like my guy friends try it, but they never land it, so they get really upset. And then there's a quote by her. You start like building a relationship with Simona Biles. So then we change a little bit the settings. Uh, we go to the gym, and obviously it's 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 a different kind of shot. Um, it's very low key, um, but the simplicity of that shot is going to be um, balanced by 
a couple of things. It's going to be refined by sound and by a couple of like visual elements that are going to make it like pretty elegant. Again, we are no longer on TV footage. We're we are investigating that move. We're just like uh, analyzing it. First little like information, she is four foot eight. What we learn next, she jumps twice her height. It is amazing. Then we're going to try to understand that a little bit better. So that's why we leave reality and we go into infographics, because infographics are going to explain the complexities of that move. But before, we're going to get an explanation from her coach as to why she can do that. Simone doesn't require a lot of run into her tumbling skills, so she can fit a longer pass onto the floor than a lot of athletes. It's normally, sorry. normally, one more time, sorry, I clicked too fast. Simone doesn't require a lot of run into her tumbling skills, so she can fit a longer pass onto the floor than a lot of athletes. So now we're going to go back to the infographics, and we're going to see that actually that speed allows her to put more moves on the floor. The buzz is actually just like more moves compiled because of all that energy. And more moves means more points. Then we're going to have like another testimony from another um, gold medalist in the 2008 Olympics. And she's going to explain to us what the consequences are when you more, put more moves, when Simona Biles puts more moves into the floor. Normally, the separations between first and second place could be three tenths or five tenths, and she goes out and wins by one or two points. Next, we're going to Let's learn that she's, she's, not, no she's, she's not only good at this. She's actually good at not only on the floor. She goes, she's great on the vault and on the beam. I would say it's probably no more than three days that it takes her to achieve a new skill. Many athletes, it takes them years. And then documentary style, we go over everything that she can do, that she did when she was young, and how good she is at the vault. And then we're going to go into the next move, which is the beam. What she does on the beam is actually what others do on the floor, but she does this on something that's four inches wide. Again, it's amazing. And she says it herself, it's amazing. It's also the hardest dismount in the world, and I'm the only one that does it. <laughs> so what, what happened over the past, over the, during that, that, that story is that we understood maybe two or three facts, but those facts are highlighted in a certain way that it makes me understand how amazing it is. Again, I was not inundated with too much information, just like a few facts that are brilliantly translated through that storytelling brilliantly translated through multiple mediums using live motion, infographics, typography, little like snippets of interviews. So they were not afraid to just like put all this together to make a, a bold statement. And the, the conclusion actually includes that, that bold statement. The conclusion is going to be what I call like a, a grand finale of acrobatics, and then it's going to be punctuated by, um, by a final quote by that um, 2008 gold medalist. At this point in time, nobody can beat Simone Biles. At this point, you believe it. She's that good, right? And that was the, the point of this story, is this is how great she is. Um, so a couple of like takeaways from this. Um, how we create, how the New York Times created tension here is to, they used a little bit of sound, some editorial to, to provoke emotion, especially in the beginning. Um, as I just like mentioned, let's not be afraid of using many, many different mediums. Uh, it makes, it, if, it, you know, if it makes the point, that's the important thing. Um, educate uh, does not not mean that you need to inundate your audience. In the contrary, just like pick the most important things that you need to communicate. And in that case, also infographics just like helped um, the understanding of more complex allows the audience to understand more complex problems or 
some things that are just like, it makes it easier to digest.